morning, uh, we're going to talk about ISC West, uh, new products uh, we um, introduced, along with some information. So I'll get started here, try to keep the mouse clicks to a minimum. So we're going to talk some new items released at the show. These are cameras, more information about Blackjack servers, network devices, and then at the end, we're going to do a training update. Okay, so... How is Digital Watchdog structuring their new product and spectrum uh, going forward? So what we've done is we've put edge-based analytics in our cameras, and that's the Megapix AI. And the Megapix AI consists of 11 algorithms, uh, a bunch of uh, different types of rules and configurations you can do in the camera to send out alerts or create actionable events in spectrum in real time, okay? person goes into a certain area at a certain time, uh, whatever. But these are highly accurate, deep learning AI, which you can use for real life, real time scenarios, okay? Blackjack AI is essentially the same algorithms, okay, as the Megapix cameras, but also added color and fall detection. And if you've watch some of my webinars or you've used a megapix ai camera and a blackjack ai camera they are essentially the same to set up okay so the blackjack ai servers have spectrum built in have the ai built in okay and and they and they you, allows you to go and record and do the analytics on the same box apologize then we have our blackjack ai appliance so this is allow you to add ai to an existing spectrum installation it's dedicated hardware, same as what's in the AI servers, but with no spectrum. Okay, so again, uh, we're trying to do it. So got a spectrum installation, customer later on says, hey, I wanna add AI to that. We get you there to the right version of spectrum. You put the appliance box in and away you go. Blackjack AI, maybe it's a new install, maybe it's a replacement install, but you have AI and spectrum in one box. And then of course you can add analytics at the edge with the cameras and then send that down to any spectrum system and get the same performance which is great the performance in the camera is excellent okay uh, if you've ever used one or want to see a demo of one uh, you can either email me and i'll put you in touch with someone or we can do another webinar they're just super very super very very accurate ai cameras because they have the deep learning technology in them so let's talk about the first product first product is a camera five megapixel camera okay has the ai de deep learning object detection you can create 40 separate detection zones in it uh no calibration point the camera powered up a couple minutes later it calibrates itself seamless integration with spectrum which is probably the most important things and you can reduce any false alarms using the AI, but also create multiple detection zones and logical rules. Now, the other thing about this camera is if you look carefully on the, I guess would be your left-hand side maybe, is it has a speaker and a microphone built in for direct communication between someone sitting at a client that has audio and the camera itself. This also has 90 degree view uh, white light built in along with red and blue flashing LEDs for some video illumination, deterrence, uh, all on a single camera. Uh, it's a verifocal uh, motorized zoom. I don't think I have the verifocal spec on me, but it's very wide to very narrow. Uh, WDR, uh, so it has excellent bandwidth management in it. Uh, you can increase your recording storage with no false alarms because you're using the AI to record instead of simple pixel-based motion detection, which we you know, all know has, you know, if the light change is wrong, there's a tree there moving around, it'll create recording. So now you can cut way down on your uh, hard drive uses or, you know, you're still making a guess at storage, maybe based on motion detection. You can say, okay, you need X number of terabytes of storage. That may actually now give them six months of storage versus 30 days because now we're just uh, recording on objects or you can set longer pre and post alarm times. So again, I'm very excited about this one because of the fact it has 
the built-in lighting, and the built-in mic and speaker, making it very versatile. And we're going to talk about the lighting in it in a second, really, like the next second. There we go. It's going very slow, my computer. Sorry about that. So there's a new menu in there. It's the audio alarm menu. So it has built-in alerts. You'll see the one and two down there. And one of those is a siren, which scared everyone on the floor that I'm on because I turned it on. The camera was turned up all the way. And then the other one's sort of this high-low uh, alert sound. Um, <clears throat> you can also, though, go in here and change the mic sensitivity, which is the volume control. These other ones are fixed. You can turn the audio on, off. The other ones are fixed, sampling rate and the uh, codec but you can change the, the mic sensitivity, okay? And then you can have the audio out, you can change the volume of that to make it louder or softer. Again, tested in the confines of the building. I got it like, I wanna say, I think I got this camera yesterday. So I haven't had much time to dig into all of it, but I was very, uh, very excited about some of these. So let's talk about the sound menu trig and tr under trigger action. So under trigger action, there's a sound menu, and this allows you to upload your own sounds for audio or custom alerts from the camera. So you can have the camera and upload a custom alert like, um, I don't know, uh, you know, you've entered a restricted area, things like that. Now there are rules, okay? The rules are you got to make the file size five meg or less. Uh, if you're using a Windows machine, the codec shouldn't be a problem. Uh, PCM S16 LE, again, the sampling rate at 8,000 hertz. Uh, stereo, now it could just be one mic, so it's really mono, but it's a stereo channel. And then uh, the bit rate, no higher than 256. Okay, so there are some rules, and you might have to tweak it. I'm actually going to go and figure out... <clears throat> in windows and if you can take audio off your you know record it on your iphone or your android phone and see how that works so we're going to do a couple things like that to make this uh you know a little easier for you there will probably be a very deep dive webinar into this particular camera because it does a lot and there's even going to be other aspects to this we're going to talk about uh shortly so there's also a new lighting menu so in the lighting menu you can turn on the white light because that's the built-in white light, all right? Uh, you can turn it off, turn it on, set the schedule. And actually, I have a little video here just to show you. Um, turned off the lights in my office and just had this thing going as a, as a backdrop and went into setup. You know, so my office was pitch dark except for a little light from the lap, my laptop monitor. And you can see, you can go in, turn on, click apply. See, I didn't quite click apply. Now, one power is literally just to tell someone the light's there. It brings up the light a little bit. You go to two, it, I believe, doubles that light. So you can see now it gets much brighter. Three doubles it again. I'll, I'll get you the, we, the, we have the exact uh, lumen numbers in its, on its uh, spec sheet. And then four. And then, of course, five, which is the, brightest now you notice the camera's actually adjusting even though it's bright it's adjusting it's hitting this thing which is a fabric mural and it's not creating too much bounce back because the camera is pretty smart and understands how it how it works then you can turn it off turn it to auto and you wait like one two three four five seconds and then it pops up and there you go and it turns on auto and we set the lighting strength to five or you can set a schedule the light's going to turn on at a certain time uh, in the camera. And again, you got your lighting strength, your uh, different items, and then the video's over. Now, under event rules, we've put part of the API. So you can have third-party devices, not just our gear, but third-party devices, like a, um, I don't know, a, access control system or something else send a command to the camera to turn on the siren okay to turn on the red led or the blue led or make the red and blue led flash or maybe have the led on and then it turns it off okay now you can also do this in spectrum spectrum has their event rules engine okay so if we go into spectrum again if you guys aren't familiar with spectrum we've got a lot of videos up there on that but we're going to do a deep dive into this camera and how it 
fully integrates with Spectrum. And I just wanted to go over just a couple of things. So we have here, we're choosing analytic event, right? And then we choose intrusion. Okay, now this camera is different and I believe the camera is going forward. Any new camera release going forward is going to have the analytics and intrusion turned on in the camera. So you can get an analytic alert from the camera from the, from the factory by default, rather than having to go in, I got to turn on analytics and add a rule or analytics is on. I got to add this rule uh, to it. So you can just keep that in mind. So you can send out alerts on any of the 11 algorithms, including intrusion, line cross, direction, appear, disappear, enter, exit, abandon, and there's a couple of others, including the logical rules where you can combine uh, rules together for, uh, I wouldn't say greater accuracy, but just because if, again, you have a vehicle or person approaching your building, you can say, okay, they might be able to get here, but as soon as they're in this spot, they violated one section and now they violated another section, that's now an alert. You know, we know they came from direction X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to go, though, and show you now HTTP request. So I did analytic event, okay, line cross, do HTTP request, right? So that's, and then I would paste in one of those things directly from the camera. Those aren't examples. Those have the IP address and everything in the camera, okay? So, but we're going to look at another type of analytic in this screenshot, which is analytic object detection. So we had analytic object detection person. So anywhere in the view, it's detecting people, okay? It will send the command saying do HTTP request. And you see at the very end, apply LED equals red. It turns on the red LED or the white light LED or the green LED, you know, whatever, or flashing LED. So this way you can send that command from spectrum to the camera, okay? Or turn on the siren or whichever one of those rules back there. But the, 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 I paste it in here directly from that camera menu, okay? So you don't even have to guess. It actually translates it. So if you put, you know, I put 5.80, which is the default is 1.80. If you put in 10.0.0.29 as that, that's the IP address that will appear here because the cam camera will translate part of its API uh, to that menu I showed you earlier. And of course, you've got to have a username and password. I was just lazy and left admin in there, but you can create another user for your uh, uh, events coming in. So let's talk about another version of this camera, okay? So it's the same picture, five megapixel. This one has the AI plus built-in QR code detection. So what that means is it'll read data from a QR code and put that into spectrum the same way I would put in, let's say a license plate camera, an AMPR camera. So you have something goes by, it reads a QR code and it puts that data in there. I'll show you a screenshot in a second um, because there's a couple of other things we can do with this particular version of that same camera. Now, I don't have the part number down here yet. When I, if it's released, I have the part number. This one is just a little bit delayed, I think because of packaging or something like that but we'll have these out very shortly. Uh, and it's a great idea for, again, like shipping. Okay, so I've got a pallet here, the camera reads it. As this thing rolls onto the truck, the guy who's driving the, uh, either pulling the pallet jack or driving the forklift, waits for the camera to flash green and it tells him then to load it on a truck. So you could have one of these aimed in the general direction of a truck and have this thing go out the truck. So this way, I we um, have this actually installed in our warehouse uh, in California. And then we had a customer who actually requested to do something like this. And actually, we came up with, I thought it should just look like a license plate. And they said, well, what about a QR code thing? Because QR code, you can put more information in, right? And so we got the QR code setting in here and put it in. And what they, what they had found was, you know, an every basically two 40 foot containers they would ship out of stuff they would have one bad pallet so that's like a bad bad meaning damaged pallet when it arrives uh so that means on a 40 foot container i think you if it's a full pallet you fit like maybe 30 40 pallets i might be wrong so every 80 pallets they're getting one that's either damaged or stuff is stolen out of them and stuff like that and so uh these are now at i think 37 different docks um 
somewhere and we're, we're going to have a, um, a white paper out on it and, uh, and things like that. So you can have a little more detail, but, uh, very excited about this one. It's sort of unique. The fact we're taking the ability to read information and put that in and then that just dumps into spectrum. Now, the reason why you want this is because if it loaded onto the truck, the truck driver signs it and it goes off and they transfer and they do whatever they're doing and the product arrives damaged, you have proof it did not go onto that truck damaged. You saw that thing roll on the truck and because you have the camera still rolling and you can set either a long post record or just leave it, you know, continuous record until there's no objects in there and then you know what i mean like so you'll have the whole event and the guy signing for it and they put the seal on the container and everything that thing was, those items got loaded on there and they were undamaged and you know uh they arrived destroyed or damaged so so there we go so that's one of the things we're doing uh with that particular camera okay i believe we'll also have an uh, lpr version of that uh in the near future and maybe a CAS version. So we'll keep you posted, but you can see you can get your QR code data. It'll put it in as a bookmark or a generic event. And then you can just type in and search for, you know, your pro number. So let's say it's your pro number, your tracking number, and that's the QR code. You just got to tell your shipping system to print out an extra piece of paper. Uh, we're recommending it to fill out that like the middle of an eight by 10 uh, piece of paper, but it depends on the proximity of the camera to the um, to where the pallet's uh, going by. So again, super excited about this. Uh, had it at the show. We're just holding up way back QR codes and camera was reading it. So it was really fun. So another new camera is five megapixel bullet. Okay, 2.7 to 13.5 millimeter motorized zoom. It has our uh, Starlight Plus in it for color and near total darkness. Same AI deep learning, same easy setup, no calibration. Uh, we are changed the design of the um, where the IRs are. They now are located under the lens, so you get less IR reflection. And like I said, if you guys are familiar with our uh, analytics, um, you can uh, you know uh, do this. It's the same setup, but also we have. A bunch of webinars on the analytics and so by all means go back and visit the uh, webinars we're, we've been doing because we have a lot of uh, webinars on our analytics and like i said going forward we're going to do some uh, new ones in this webinar format also <clears throat> so the next thing we released at the show although i don't have the part numbers down here is the megapix ai cas so again i would say if you're familiar with it some of you guys probably are as we make cameras we call our CAS camera, so it's camera as a system. So these contain storage, digital watchdog, spectrum software, all the licensing uh, required for it, and the built-in analytics. So they can be a standalone server and camera, okay? Or you can do what we call merge, where you take a bunch of them and put them together in their system. But there is no server. There's no need for a analytics server. Um, you know, so, so all your different functions that you'd have before at some sites, you can have built into the camera. Okay. Now we're also going to have an ANPR version, which is our automatic number plate reader. So license plate reading and, you know, decoding camera and then AMPR with MMC, uh, built into the CAS cameras. So those will be able to read, make, make model color along with the license plate. So we're going to have a plethora of CAS cameras. And if you notice, the one with the light on here. So we can have uh, a camera out in the middle of nowhere, running on very low power, you know, streaming back somewhere, but it can create some kind of deterrent using the AI. So you are assured that if a person walks by that gate in that remote location, the light on that camera turns on, okay, or it starts flashing. Uh, so again, uh, very excited about these. I love the CAS product. It simplifies installation. Uh, and I see some questions have popped in. I will answer those in a few. And also at the show, uh, we released our PTZ cameras. So we have both our 4K and 3 megapixel camera 
with user and AI controlled pan, tilt, and zoom. Okay, these have our same Starlight Plus in them. Uh, the three megapixel actually goes 60 frames a second. So if you're looking for some high speed video from um, either cars or uh, we've actually ha had cameras in the past that did this. I think our MT 95s or 94s did this uh, and you can do 60 frames a second. A lot of times on production lines, uh, they can do it. So a PTZ camera, these can really now replace multiple fixed cameras because you can do the smart presets, the patterns, the swings, which I only just recently learned what a swing was because I rarely used PTZ cameras, you know, in installations and stuff like that. But this will also track objects. So it's built in object tracking. So you have the camera in a fixed position and a person's walking by, it will follow that person. Even if another person crosses in front of them or behind them, it'll stay focused on that person or that vehicle, okay? You can set the amount of dwell time, all these different things uh, in in the camera itself. There are uh, tons of features. I actually have a long, longer webinar about it and even how to set up the auto tracking. So by all means, check that out. It's very recently, I think it was in March or April, beginning of March or April. So anyway, I'll move on, we'll show you a little bit of the specs. So these things have 1148 foot IR range in both of them. Like I said, max 60 frames a second and 6.5 to 260 millimeter varifocal lens or 40x zoom. Uh, these are really proven camera with a proven PTZ engine in them and proven AI, okay? And another feature which I like in a PTZ camera, and sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't, is a little extra, uh, if you look down here, the tilt, little extra tilt so it goes to about 100 degrees so actually the camera will tilt up a little bit and look over the horizon for whatever reason you might uh, need that but this is standalone um, tracking there's no external software needed you can adjust it all in the camera um, and uh, <clears throat> here's another thing so you know we're also adding for you guys who do installations we're going to start adding in, uh, we're going to release a copy of our um, IP finder uh, shortly, but we're adding into the new cameras the serial number. So now, some you know, you're calling tech support and they're asking for the serial number. You use IP finder or you have recorded the serial number somewhere else, whatever. So when someone's asking you for a serial number, you have very easy access to it. You don't have to pull down the camera let's just say to get it, or if you want to document it at the end of the installation, which is what I recommend, you have the software pull down the serial number for you and you save it to like a, a text file or spreadsheet or something like that. So <clears throat> that's a not super exciting thing, but it's a really uh, powerful um, uh, tool for you at post installation, you go there, make sure everything's documented. I put the serial number for this one in here and so on. But should anyone ask you for it, it's also easy to find now. So another new product is the Blackjack AI appliance. All right, has the same algorithms and everything that's in the camera, but it's on uh, the server. Uh, we have two different versions. We have a rack mount and a slim desktop mount. Uh, the, you know, we, we ship it with the rail kits. They have our five-year warranty and, and then the uh, rack mount version has our mission critical five-year warranty. So it's on-site response. Next business day, we do have to get a call or a tech support first. And we do do priority production on these. So we get these out to you quite quickly, usually uh, seven to 10 business day uh, lead time on it. Um, so these are the models that have the five-year on-site uh, warranty on it. These are running Intel Xeon processors. Uh, you can have your Max analytic streams, uh, 24 to 64 analytic streams. They have different variations of, um, excuse me, different variations of uh, RAM as well as hard drive spaces. So that's one of these things you uh, contact us. We'll tell you the Max uh, hard drive that's in it. We have the OS on two SSDs set as RAID 1. Okay, so one SSD goes, the thing's still going to operate. Um, so, that, and that's absolutely excellent. Right now, uh, 
there are windows, but you can log in remotely from Linux and do setup or whatever. So these are uh, powerful machines with a great uh, warranty. And then next one, five-year warranty, just not the on-site warranty. Uh, this is designed to run uh, 64 analytic streams. So again, we're not recording. This is just taking the analytic streams uh, from the camera, it's analyzing the, the video from the camera, and then sending that data into Spectrum. All right. So keep that in mind. These are for adding analytics to the system. So we got some questions in down here. Let me just see. Let's see. I'll answer some of these at the end. One of them, I don't know. And someone said, yay, finally serial numbers, easy to find. I know. Thank you. You may be one of the guys that have been asking for it. So, all right. So next we released is our compressor. Okay. So analog to IP encoder. Does 4K cameras. Does uh, 5 megapixel cameras. 3 megapixel cameras. 2 megapixel cameras. The old analog CSVB, you know, whatever they were. I think the best were like a thousand line uh, cameras, uh, and, but it allows you to go in there. Now this one integrates directly with Spectrum as you would, as you would suspect. So that means if you set a camera to record at five frames a second, it goes in and tells this thing to have that camera record at five frames a second. So you don't have to go in and check too much on the actual setup in here, as long as you know the usual, uh, the, the usual, the username and password I use. Here's a, here's a rear view that has the alarm inputs, audio in. Uh, we do have for setup, initial setup, HDMI and VGA. All right. The e-serial ATA port, because it's not recording, is disabled on it. Uh, but if you had one of those old PTZ cameras, got the RS-45 uh, on it. And I tested it with an old PTZ, not a digital watchdog camera in it. Picked it right up and understood the camera understood Pelco and this thing understood Pelco. So it's very easy to set up. And again, here are the specs. This stuff's uh, uh, available on our website. The key is, of course, it can do the old 960H stuff and the old 320 by 240. There's probably people out there who spent, you know, 10 grand on some PTZ camera years ago and they're not quite ready to give them up, even though you barely can see out of them. The lenses, the lenses all, covers are all scratched up and everything, but they want to hold on a, a a little longer. Uh, these are all uh, CE, FCC, and NDAA, TAA compliant, uh, which means you have uh, no trouble with anything. So next network accessory we're going to talk about is speaker we released. So we released a 30-watt uh, speaker with a mic built in for two-way communication, okay? PoE powered, all right? So you, again, you can take one of our horns, we also have our illuminators, which are either white light or IR light or hybrids that are white light and higher light. Uh, combine it with a horn or combine it with a camera that has the flashing light and you can create deterrence. So now someone again is walking, approaching the building and it's two in the morning, light turns on, there's an announcement or a siren goes off or whatever, and you can start deterring people from maybe entering an area they're not supposed to enter into it or an unsafe area. So there's that. Now let's talk about training a little bit. So I have the URL down here. So these were our certification class. These are all day classes. They last about eight hours. Uh, and uh, these are the ones we have currently scheduled. We're doing one also in Southern California. Uh, we're adding in probably today or tomorrow. Uh, and uh, a few others in Maryland and New York. So we're continuously filling this calendar. Uh, they are either done by myself or the, um, what we call our SEs, which are sales engineers, which are our most experienced uh, hardware guys. And so by all means, hit the website, enroll uh, for the certification class, um, giving yourself more confidence doing digital watchdog certification. Uh, we go into of course, Spectrum, uh, the Spectrum hardware, how to set it up, the cameras, how to set them up, the AI, it is a, a full uh, day's class. Uh, we'll even feed you a little lunch. So the other training we're doing is uh, 
And again, this is our training calendar. I call it DW Local Training. There might be other names for it, DW Live Training. So these are between an hour and two hours, and these are everywhere. So if you go to the uh, website and you go to our events page, this is our uh, events page. You can see they're all over the place. We go April, we go May. All right, and you can go through these. And now this, uh, you know, again, we're going to be posting this on our you know, socials and our website. And call it. We'll get old, but the URLs won't get old. So go to the event page, go to the training page, and at least you can get, uh, you know, caught up to speed. So 